spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain America America the shed his grace on Spacious skies for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. Whenever you're ready, sir. Pauls? Thompson? Yeah. Gurnett. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Milton. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please stand for the pledge of invocation by Councilmember Gary Gurnantz. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We pray today for our visitors from South Sudan. We know the civil unrest in that part of the world. And we ask that your prayers are with them as they work through all of their humanitarian uh, efforts. And, uh, we also pray for uh, peace here locally. Uh, we continue to experience the, the violence in our city we pray for those who are working very hard to uh, stop the, the flow of illegal firearms, uh, strengthening and uh, being with our police officers and our community leaders and their members uh, in all of their efforts to stop and bring our community uh, back together uh, in a more peaceful form format and a peaceful nation. We ask this in the name. Amen. Amen. City Clerk certified publication of the Daily Record on April 17th, the Referee Free Council, regular City Council meeting, April 21st, 2015. At current copy of meetings that is posted in white binder on the East Wall of the Legislative Chambers. Good afternoon and welcome to the Omaha City Council. This meeting is conducted in public and by law may only address the topics listed on the published agenda. The council will hear testimony, but will not engage in debate of the issues with the public at this meeting. During testimony, it's not appropriate to applaud or convey disapproval. These actions only detract from the formal decorum of the meeting. At this time, please turn off or mute any electronic devices. And today, before we get started with our regular agenda, we have two items uh, we'd like to note. And the first one is, as Councilman Garnett um, just spoke about, is a delegation from the South Sudan. They're here to tell us a little bit about the South Sudan Relief and Rehab Agency. And so this time, we'd like to recognize you for some remarks. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, if I may, yeah. uh, I've provided each of my colleagues with a description of what their effort is in, in uh, South Sudan. Uh, so I won't go over a long oration of that. Uh, I 
was asked to speak at their uh, conference this weekend. And I have to tell you, uh, the efforts that are uh, going into this humanitarian uh, <clears throat> project is immense. And uh, they are all over the globe looking for assistance uh, and telling their story. Uh, and they asked for if they could have uh, just a few minutes here today to uh, enlighten us uh, in where they're at in their humanitarian efforts. So I'd like to recognize um, the uh, Deputy Executive Director of the South Sudan Relief and Rehabilitation Agency, uh, Malako Gork. Uh, come on up to the microphone. He'll introduce the speaker for the day. Thank you very much, uh, uh, members of the council. It's an honor to stand before you and uh, introduce the guests that are, that are representing uh, members of our country. Uh, the leader that I will be inviting is a former deputy governor of Jongolai State, one of the richest states uh, back in southern Sudan. is now the chairperson for the National Committee for Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, he's here to give you more information of what he's here about. May you please welcome, or may I call, uh, Hussein Marnot. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, <coughs> uh, Honorable President of the Council, uh, Honorable Members, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a pleasure to be with you here this morning or this afternoon. Uh, with us, um, we came, we are five days here. We are actually from South Sudan. Uh, South Sudan, of course, you know it, uh, is the youngest nation in the world these days. Um, we attain our independence on the July 9th, 2011. Uh, and that independence came with a lot of effort of everybody, uh, particularly the American people, the governments, the civil societies that worked hard and tirelessly to see that people of South Sudan get their independence and their freedom. So I stand here to say thank you. Uh, this young country, uh, with the joy that actually we had, the jubilation with the freedom and independence, unfortunately today you hear in the media, it is again bleeding. And this is very unfortunate. Uh, it has happened because of uh, lack of leadership, uh, lack of system of governance. As we fought the war for over 50 years and we attain our independence, uh, the organization that was leading the, the, the liberation movement, a military organization, so when we attain our independence, we want to transform it into a political party. Unfortunately, the leadership of the party felt threatened that if we go democratic, maybe they will lose their positions and therefore they started uh, harassing those who were calling for reforms. Uh, on the 15th of December 2013, this is where now uh, the war started again, and uh, our president, the current sitting president, uh, alleged that there was a coup in the country, and he arrested most of his colleagues, and he started killing people in cold blood. And this is very unfortunate. One ethnic group, the newer community of South Sudan, were targeted. In three days, over 20,000 people were killed, and the war went in. The same president invited Uganda, uh, using their air force, uh, bombing the villages with ban weapons like cluster bombs. And all this has affected the people. People are displaced into the neighboring countries. Internally, people are displaced. A lot of people are in the UN camps in South Sudan. And the suffering is so big. Our people today, children, orphans, elderly, are displaced. They don't have medicine. No food, no shelter, all you know. Basic living things are not there. Now with this situation, we came here, we want to appeal to the American people, to the government, to the civil societies here, that we need your support. We want peace in South Sudan. As you supported us for our independence and freedom, again, we want to bother you. We know that we have disappointed you, uh, that we did not handle our independence very well. Again, we want this war to stop and want those culprits to be brought to book because um, there's impunity, people are being killed, no question. Uh, we want your support. Again, here we have a big community in Nebraska. 
over maybe 15 to 20,000 South Sudanese are based here. And these people, because the news they are getting from home, uh, they are also a kind of going through a lot of stress. And we are appealing that actually your support to them here, uh, again, also will be very important. So with us is actually the purpose of our coming, and particularly to you here, that you host the largest community of South Sudanese in this state and in this city. So we want your support to support them, and by supporting them also, they are supporting us back home. Uh, again, also, we want to reach to the top leadership of the country here uh, so that uh, they can also push for issues like, you know, there are sanctions that are to be imposed in South Sudan for those who are obstructing peace. We want this to happen. The UN Security Council want to impose sanctions, and if the Americans are leading in this, I think it will be a kind of like a deterrent that people will go for peace. There are reports that are published by the African Union, which is entailing those who are actually uh, behind the killings. Uh, this report is now, some powers are sitting on it, they don't want to release it. We wanted to lobby you also that if you can add your voice that this report is made public and those who are mentioned are brought to book. Peace can return to South Sudan with all our efforts. Peace is not a monopoly of a group. I believe putting our hands together, peace can come to South Sudan. I appreciate, thank you again, and thank you, Honorable President of the Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that message, and we appreciate you being here, and we appreciate the growing Sudanese population in Omaha, too. Mr. President, if I may. Yes. Uh, they have a, a little formal part that they would like to shake our hands as they, as they depart, if that sure. would be okay. Yeah. Next, we have a delegation from UNO we'd like to recognize. Uh, we have several members of the administration, of course, several members of the hockey team, and the coach of the hockey team here today uh, to recognize them for the amazing season they had and for representing Omaha so well in the Frozen Four. We're going to start by a proclamation to be read by both uh, Councilmember Jerem and Councilmember Thompson. Then we'll hear some remarks from, um, I think, Chancellor Christensen and Trev Alberts. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. It's my privilege to have UNO, um, both its main campus and its Xarban campus and the arena in District 3 that I represent. And I just thought it would be fitting, although there's, I've learned now several of our colleagues that are actually alums of UNO and connected to UNO, that uh, Mr. Thompson, who's been such a leader as a pr professor at UNO and has been a champion of, of causes all things for benefiting UNO, and I just thought it would be appropriate that we jointly read this proclamation. So, whereas the University of Nebraska at Omaha, led by Athletic Director Don Leahy, along with a committee of civic-minded citizens, began to lay the foundation for establishing an NCAA Division I hockey program at UNO in 1995, and whereas their vision was realized when the Mavericks under coach Mike Kemp played their first game in October 1997 at the Omaha Civic Auditorium and whereas Maverick Hockey joined the Central Collegiate Hockey Association in 1999, competed effectively against legendary programs and received an NCAA tournament bid in 2006 and whereas with coach Kemp's move to assistant athletic director, athletic director Trev Alberts hired Dean Blaze for coach to coach the Mavericks in 2010. Uh, coach then led the Maverick transition to the Western Collegiate Hockey Association the following year as well as its second NCAA tournament bid and whereas in the second year of membership in the powerful National Collegiate Hockey Conference the Mavericks put together an exceptional season finished third in the league and received its third NCAA tournament bid and whereas the Mavericks won the Midwest Regional by defeating Harvard yay and RIT <laughs> and advanced to the Frozen Four along with traditional powers Providence, Boston 
and North Dakota University, and whereas a new era for Maverick Sports begins in the 2015-16 season, as all Maverick Sports will complete their reclassification to NCAA Division I membership, and whereas at the same time, thanks to the vision and the leadership of Chancellor John Christensen, Vice Chancellor Alberts, and many other civic leaders, the new UNO Community Arena will open in October 2015 as home to Mavericks hockey, also home to Mavericks basketball and volleyball, and as a focus point for campus events, recreation, and community usage. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Omaha that the Omaha City Council congratulates Coach Blaze and the Maverick hockey team and the entire University of Nebraska at Omaha community on an outstanding season, finishing as the nation's fourth-ranked team, and declares today UNO, UNO Maverick, Maverick Hockey, hockey Day. Day in the city of Omaha. In witness hereof, we have set our hands and the official seal of the city of Omaha to be affixed 21 day of April 2015. Christensen, University of Nebraska at Omaha. On behalf of our entire campus, I want to thank all of you for um, making this day possible today. We are so proud of uh, the hockey team and what they accomplished this year, not only on the uh, ice, but in the classroom. Um, these are a terrific set of uh, athletes, but also a uh, terrific uh, set of students. We also want to say thanks to you for the support you've provided um, regarding the establishment of the university uh, community arena. Without your support, this would not have, uh, would not have been possible. It's incredibly proud to be Omaha's team. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, our Vice Chancellor for Athletic Leadership, Trev Alberts. Thank you, Trev. Well, I want you to know, again, uh, that we're certainly grateful for all of your support. And uh, we are proud that we finished fourth. But I think our coaches and players will tell you that we're not satisfied with that. We're not comfortable with fourth. Our objective is to finish first. So we hope to be back here some year. Uh, celebrating finishing as the national champion. I would like to just introduce a few of the folks who are with us so uh, you all can see who they are. I don't want you to be confused. The first gentleman here is not David Letterman. Um, <laughs> this is our head coach, Dean Blaze. Uh, Dean has been our head coach for six years, uh, won two national championships at North Dakota, and uh, has really helped to elevate our, our profile of our hockey program uh, and is responsible for bringing all these uh, wonderful players to Omaha. So head coach, Dean Blaze. Uh, thank you, Coach. Next to uh, Coach Blaze is uh, Tyler Vessel. He's one of our vaunted freshmen that many have talked about. He's from Minnesota, also played for the Omaha Lancers. So he's grown to really uh, enjoy and become accustomed to this community. And a great young man and a great student, Tyler Vessel. Uh, we have a president with us here today, James Polk, uh, is with <laughs> us. He's from New York, uh, one of our outgoing seniors um, who has been with this program uh, uh, through some difficult transitions, multiple leagues, and has hung in there for us and has been a great leader uh, for our hockey program. So thank you, James. Um, of course, to accomplish this, it takes a lot of people and a lot of support on our campus, not only our chancellor and the academic leadership, but Dr. Bill Wakefield is our faculty athletics rep. And so he advocates for athletics on our campus. Uh, he is obviously a faculty member, and he served in that role for many, many years. He's a great friend, and we certainly appreciate his support as well. Uh, and by the way, he was an interim athletic director uh, before, so he knows uh, what it's like to be in my chair. Uh, Dr. B.J. Reed, Senior Vice Chancellor for uh, all of academics. Basically, he is the uh, academic chief on our campus and a great supporter of our program as well. He is here. Uh, Bill Conley, Vice Chancellor for Business and Finance, uh, the gentleman who controls all the purse strings, so a good person to know on UNO's campus. Thank you, Bill. And finally, the aforementioned Mike Kemp, uh, who started the program. A lot of hard work went into it, and uh, we're certainly grateful that Mike has stayed on, helped us to identify Coach Blaze, and 
and is working every day to help us uh, continue to have a successful hockey program. So those are who are with us here today. We again thank you on behalf of our hockey program, the entire athletic department. It's a great day. It's a great time to be a Maverick, and your support has been very meaningful to us. So thank you. Oops, now they're turning around the other way. We confused the media all the time. There we go. And before you leave, too, I'll just add my two cents. And if other council members want to add their remarks, they can do that as well. I'll just say it's uh, an exciting time for UNO, not only in hockey, but in so many different ways. So we should certainly appreciate the leadership by. Chancellor Christensen and all that he's doing, um, and Trav Alberts, I think this is an indication that your vision is coming to pass and is working, and that's exciting to see uh, from our perspective as well. And then certainly the hockey team, uh, an amazing uh, run. Uh, having lived in Boston at one point and having lots of hockey friends, it was uh, pleasing to me to have them eat their hearts out by seeing Omaha all over, all over the arena there uh, <laughs> and on national TV, which is great exposure for Omaha as well. And, uh, a great showing and a class act all the way through, which is just as important as the, the results you achieved. And I can't go without saying and pointing out that Mike Kemp is here too. So one thing we forgot, we forgot to add to the list of the new arena, which is very exciting, is there will also be curling there, right? And I know Mike Kemp was also a curler. <laughs> <laughs> so we look forward to doing that as well once that gets up and operational. I love this job. <laughs> With that, we'll move to the, to the regular agenda and appreciate you all being here. Thank you. See you Thank soon. You the zoning ordinance on final reading planning board attachments, item number five, ordinance to rezone property located at 5519 North 6th Street from R435 single family residential district high density and general commercial district to R4 single family residential district high density. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing number five is today. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Second. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gurnat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Five is passed, seven to zero. Special use permit broadcast tower. Uh, item number six, resolution special use permit application submitted by SBA Communications for a special use permit to allow a broadcast tower with a waiver of height to allow a 105 foot tower uh, for the property located at 16140 Fort Street is hereby approved. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. B and C are documents opposing, and D is a communications from the agent for SBA requesting a four week layover to May 19th, 2015. So moved. Second. 
Roll call. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Six is laid over four weeks. Liquor item number seven. Uh, Culprits Cafe and Bakery, 1603 Farm Street, Class C liquor license, new application, new location. There's a request for an amendment to remove the outdoor patio area. Public hearing number seven is today. Are there any proponents? Please come down. And Mr. your name and address for the record there, please. My name is Luke Maybe, uh, 1603 Farnham Street, Culper Cafe and Bakery. Uh, we have been open a year and a half now, and we have been become a, quite the brunch place. So we wanted to add alcohol to our menu items. Um, I just wanted to document. We did our best to uh, communicate with residents to uh, acknowledge what we were doing. And if anybody had any objections or was inquisitive about what we were doing. So I have a, a few um, emails with um, people that were for it. I didn't get any opposition. And then I just have a letter of recommendation from um, Holly Barrett at the Omaha Downtown Improvement District. Great. Should I? Camera right here. Okay. And I'm here to answer any questions. So. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Roll call. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. yes. Roll call. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Mr. President, yes. Uh, seven is approved as or adopted as amended seven to zero. We'll take items eight and nine together. Eight is the sociable inn at 4917 South 136th Street, Class C liquor license, no application, old location. Uh, nine is a resolution granting permission to Big Red Kino for a satellite Kino location at the at this location. Public hearings on number eight and nine are today. Proponents, please, Ms. Coffey. Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Katrina Coffey. I'm Vice President of Marketing for Big Red Kino. We're located at 11248 John Galt Boulevard, and we're here today for um, the liquor license as well as the Kino license. And we're here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Pauls. Thank you, Mr. President. I just have a question now that they're really redeveloping that area because of the uh, Mildred Lumberyard. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you're close by. Are you planning to do anything with that building that you're in? Hopefully. Um, so Your name, please. Oh, name. Joanne Harrell, 4917 South 136. Um, the current owners of the building are out of Denver, and I'm not sure if they're completely up to date on what's going on as far as the revamping of that area, but they do own um, property next door to the building, which I understand they thought about building uh, an outdoor area and more parking. With this building. Well, well good. Uh, <clears throat> wish you the best. Back in the day, when it was, I used to go to one and go. I haven't been there for a while, but it was an interesting, fun place. Good. Thank you. Is that a motion? Second. Roll call. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. President? Yes. Eight and nine are adopted. Thank Seven you. to zero. Thanks. Item number 10, Duggar's Cafe, 4950 Dodge Street, Class I liquor license, no application, new location. Public hearing number 10 is today. Proponents, please. I'm Jeanette Leitner, one of the owners of Duggar's Cafe at 4950 Dodge Street, and we're wanting to get our liquor license, serve beer and wine. Okay, thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Roll call. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Ten is adopted. Seven to zero. Thank you. Thanks. Item number eleven, Tobacco Hut, 13822 P Street. Package liquor license, no application, no location. Public hearing number eleven is today. Are there any proponents? 
I might have the Khanglia cut. My yard, this is a 13822p state, and we get the liquor license before here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Second. Roll call. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gurnat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Thank uh, you, 11 is adopted 7 Thank to 0. Thank you, City Council Member. Thank yeah. you, President. Item number 12 is Marks, 4916 Underwood Avenue, request permission for an addition and to correct the license premises to the entire irregular shaped three-story building and uh, both floors of the two-story addition with outdoor areas. We have a communications from permits inspections. They need their permits. So it should be uh, granted contingent on their getting their proper permits. Public hearing number 12 is today. Proponents, please. Hello, my name is Molly Romero, uh, one of the co-owners of Marks. I live at 5101 Nicholas, and we're here to answer any questions. Uh, Mark Blue, I check 3625 California. Uh, owner. <laughs> Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Uh, Molly and Mark, um, we've talked about the space there, and. Yeah. Um, and granting this license today will allow you to do some things that Mark's Beaster will do on the bottom floor too. Is it, can it be best be described as um, occasional events or how would you describe? Yeah, I think uh, we, it's basically uh, really an extension of what we're doing upstairs. You know, we're a bistro and uh, we, uh, we sometimes have groups that are, in, you know, uh, 10 top parties and, and larger than that and we just don't have much space for parties like that. So this will give us a little bit of room for larger dining parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and the outside space uh, is not really even being set uh, as a table and chair dining space. It's more of a, of a garden outside of the space that people will be able to dine in mm -hmm. just to, so they can gather. While still considering a permanent uh, bottom floor tenant, right? Or a permanent operation on the bottom floor? Well, we would be occupying it. Um, it it's, um, we'll have the flexibility for various kinds of events you know, we get a lot of rec requests for uh, rehearsal dinners that are, exceed our capacity, uh, wedding receptions that exceed our current capacity. Um, so we're planning to use it for that. Okay. So. With the intention of enlivening the street right there, right, and having uh, many events to keep that space full, right? Well, one of the things that we have been talking about, and it, we're still, the, the vision is getting fleshed out a little bit, is having like we did last Valentine's Day, we had a pop-up store where we had eight to ten craftspeople who had a temporary store there, and we would like to do things like that. We have talked to um, some other people about having poetry readings, uh, things like that. We, we're going to be as active as we can be in filling this space, not just for large parties, but other activities that would be um, easily accessed by everybody in the community. Great. Thank you. Second. Roll call. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerome? <coughs> Milton? Yeah. Mr. President? You. Yes. Thanks. It's adopted 7-0 contingent. Uh, we'll take item, or item 13 is Whitfield 1224 South 103rd Street request permission for an addition to the present Class C and catering liquor license of a second building. Public hearing number 13 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Ackley, Coley Jessen Law Firm, 1025 South 103rd Street. With me today is Ron Pop, owner of Pops Inc. at 1224 South 103rd Street. Basically, we're ingredient. It was on the corner next to Wheatfields there at one Pacific place. Pops Inc. is going to expand in there. The Wheatfields concept will expand by about 325 feet, so that's an extension of that liquor license application and then the old ingredient space, the vast majority of that becomes a new concept, Andres Tortillery, and that's why we're here today. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Thompson? Just uh, put my button to say that Ron has the best sticky uh, rolls and the orange rolls and the cinnamon Thank rolls you. in town. Thank so you. Appreciate it. Uh, move the approval. Thank you. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gurnat? Any samples? Yes. Gray? <laughs> yes. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, 13 is approved 7-0. Thank you. Thank you. 
We'll take items 14 and 15 together. Uh, there are two grocery stores for managers, the Hinky Dinky Supermarket at 2900 Leavenworth Street and the USA Food Incorporated at 1826 Vinton Street. Request permission to appoint Stephen Williams manager. Public hearings on number 14 and 15 are today. Proponents, please. Steve Williams, 1417 South 163rd. Um, here representing Spartan Ash and the two stores, just here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Gernan. Thank you, Mr. President. Steve, I just wanted to say that uh, Spartan Ash investment up on 18th and <clears throat> Street is awesome and just to qualm some of the rumors that were going around that you were going to close in that store uh, are blatantly false <laughs> i don't think that they would put in the amount of money that they did uh, to remodel that store uh, become involved with the neighborhood association uh, in, uh, contract with a couple of uh, mural artists that did an awesome job of depicting history around the interior of that of that store. So I, I, I hope you enjoy your duties as you go into that facility and, and welcome to our part of the hood. The store's doing well and you're right, it's a, it's a beautiful location. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. Motion to approve. Thank you. Roll call. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 14 or 15 are approved. Thanks. 7 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council because I am placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed consent agenda should be taken up at city council meeting following the consent agenda and the order in which they were removed as otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items number 16 and 17 were held on April 14th. Roll call. Paul. Mr. Paul, do you have your light on? Oh. Can I just speak to one of the items? 16 and 17? Uh, no, I'm sorry. No. Okay. We'll do 16 and 17 first, then I'll come back to you. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Kernat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 16 or 17 are passed, 7 to 0. Public hearings on agenda items number 18 through 39 are today. If you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. Seeing none, public hearings are closed. Mr. Pauls. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I do have a question on number 23, uh, and I'd like to have somebody uh, from either uh, Public Works have a little bit of a discussion for me, with me. Uh, this is a project that on the 168 between West Center and Q Street has been an, a major issue for the constituents in my area, and I'm just reading uh, part of the document it said that uh, in 2006, uh, a contract was let. First supplement to this contract was in 2012. And now it says, uh, as I read further on, it was not expected to extend this until 2015. And the reason why I'd like to have some information, because people out there uh, just have some question, what are the dates uh, that you're looking for, the actual seeing the road in place? Bob Stubbe, Public Works. Um, this is a project that's uh, been in our CIP for, for a number of years now. Uh, it's a project that has a combination of uh, federal aid and city funding. And when you utilize federal aid on a project, there is a process that you have to go through in order to be able to end up fully utilizing those federal dollars. Um, the process on a particular project can extend into many, many years. And for example, this would be considered as probably a complex project uh, because of a number of reasons. One is parkland, two is, is the, the proximity to the lake, uh, it's got a bridge on it, potential wetlands. Um, so we are currently going through what's called the, the NEPA process, which is the National Environmental Policy Act. Uh, that particular act is essentially an umbrella over about 45 different uh, either federal acts or executive orders that we have to comply with. Um, we're currently in the NEPA process, which we anticipate uh, to be completed by the end of 15. Uh, once we complete the NEPA process, uh, we will go through uh, design. Uh, once we complete design, we have to go through right-of-way acquisition. 
Uh, and so it'll be a number of years yet before we get to a point where we actually will have the funds obligated, uh, which is, is a, a federal term uh, that you have to comply with also, and then construction. So currently in our CIP, it's identified for uh, the section from Poppleton, which is just south of Pacific Street to West Center, is scheduled for 17 obligation, and the section from West Center south to just north of Q Street is uh, identified in 2018. There's always a potential uh, that those particular projects could end up moving back again just because of the process that we go through. But that's currently what's in our CIP. Okay, so you're saying right now, if I would say uh, 217 and 218, those are the projected years for what? I just want to make sure for what? Those if are the projected years of when essentially we will comply with all of the requirements of the of using federal funds, which would essentially then identify that those funds are obligated for that particular project. Once they're obligated, then we can bid that uh, project, which essentially bidding is through uh, the Nebraska Department of Roads. And so if, for example, uh, the first section from Poppleton South to West Center is obligated in 17, depending on when it's obligated, when it's bid, um, it could get started in 17 or it could end up getting started construction in 18. And the same thing would go with the section from West Center South to Q Street. Uh, it's currently identified for obligation in 18. Again, depending on what time of year that gets obligated, uh, the potential it could get started in 18 or it could actually get constructed, uh, excuse me, during 19. Okay, let's assume everything has gone right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know I'm assuming a lot, but I, 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 I'm being optimistic. Okay, if everything goes right, when would I be driving down that street with new, uh, new uh, concrete or uh, asphalt? When well, do you anticipate? Yeah, the, the first phase from, excuse me, from Poppleton uh, south, potentially you would be, that would most likely end up taking one construction season. So. Uh, the potential for that would be driving down that street probably uh, in either uh, late 18 or 19. Uh, the section from West Center South, most likely, uh, I believe that's a two-year project, again, because it has a bridge on there and it's a lot larger project. The potential is that that could end up being probably uh, 20 or 21 that you would actually be driving on it. Brand new street. Okay. And that's if everything goes well. That's if everything goes well. Keep in mind is that typically in going through the federal process is that the state and the feds have a schedule that uh, they identify and, and they, they essentially allow for almost two years for right, right away acquisition. Okay, and so, and I'm just trying to, because I, this question comes up all the time. So you say in the 20s, hopefully, but this started, this contract was started in what I see, 2006. Yeah, essentially I think this particular uh, contract was entered into in February of 2007, if I'm not mistaken. And again, um, timelines that are established using federal funds, they say that a project can take anywhere from four to 10 years before you actually get to the point where you're actually bidding uh, a project. Okay. And again, this would be considered as a complex project and therefore is most likely in the 10-year time frame. Well, reading from this document, the original contract was approved in December 2006. The council had a resolution in February 2007. So the contract was led in 2006, and as I'm reading what's in front of me, uh, we approved this uh, by council resolution 233 on February 27, 2007. I'm just saying, uh, I just want the, my constituents to realize uh, nobody's dragging their feet on the city's part. Is that correct? No, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of an individual that likes to get projects done and, and it's frustrating for me also from the perspective of the process that we have to go through. But, but again, the, right. the state is a steward of federal funds and so it's both the state of Nebraska Department of Roads and it's the Federal Highway Administration essentially that, that we have to uh, work with to be able to get this project, uh, you know, essentially constructed. And uh, uh, once the, the, the NEPA document uh, is finalized, 
Um, that is something that uh, if there's ever a challenge to the document, the, the feds are the ones that end up defending that particular uh, document. So it's, it's important on, from their perspective that uh, we actually go through that, that process fully and actually comply with all of the federal acts that we have to comply with. Okay. Thank you for allowing me. Just, I just wanted my constituents to understand it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion on these items? Motion approved. Roll call. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Durnat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 18 to 39 are adopted, 7 to 0. Ordinance on final reading, item number 40, <coughs> ordinance to amend chapter 43, building to add a new article 10 to provide for licensing and regulation of boarding and rooming houses. A is amendment of the whole, B is document submitted. C is documents by J. Davis, and D is another, a second amendment of the whole. Public hearing was held on April 7th. Mr. Jerem. Yes, I'd like to thank the uh, planning department, particularly uh, J. Davis, um, Chief Kanger for the fire department, um, Deputy, is it Battalion Chief McCaw? Yes, sir. Um, for all your work on this, um, it, it was, it's, Unfortunate that it took the tragic loss of life in South Omaha last holiday season to awaken the city to the extent of, of the problems and safety hazards that were existing in our city because of these boarding houses and rooming houses. And I think today, with the passage of this um, ordinance and the amendment of the whole, we, we make meaningful progress in addressing that problem in the city um, for people, many of whom really don't have a voice uh, because of their, the size or lack thereof of their economic pocketbook to really speak up for themselves. And the ordinance does so in what I would say a responsible way um, and is one which there hasn't really been any opposition to. And uh, we were able to improve its form to address the emerging technologies of Airbnb and that to, to, to work on those more long term, as well as to address in here problems that neighborhoods have with what, what are essentially rooming houses of their own by uh, people who take over single family housing and then create all kinds of neighborhood issues uh, resulting in decay. So I'm pleased to uh, congratulate you for your hard work and particularly uh, Jay Davis and um, thank you for that. To, I think if you know you look back on your career, uh, Battalion Chief McCall, you, you probably get few opportunities to say you know there's something big there that, I, that you were a part of that that hopefully will make a difference and I think this will be one of them so thank you um, and I would make a motion to approve the amendment as well. Second. Motion a second. I agree with everything um, Councilman Jerem just said. And Jay, if you could just come down for a second, to just to have a short exchange on this. Just because this has been a high profile item and we've had several reiterations here and, and this is an amendment of a whole that replaces an amendment of a whole. <laughs> so let's just, I want people to understand the significance of this, which I think Councilman Jerem is right in pointing out is, is a big deal, both for the fire department and the planning department, and but also the city in general. And so I, Councilman Jerem is correct. The amendment of the whole removes altogether the tourist rooming houses provisions. So the concern about Airbnb or emerging technology is not in this ordinance we're considering today, right? And Jay Davis, System Planning Director. Yeah, that is, yes, that is correct. Uh, we've removed that uh, currently. And the amendment of the whole for the amendment of the whole is because I can't speak English anymore. So <laughs> uh, we went through that a couple times. It was just to clarify that more than three unrelated individuals, I have a tendency three or more, so we just fixed that and said, uh, more than three, but uh, I appreciate the remarks from Councilman Jerem as well. And, and uh, the fire department and I have got a whole new working relationship. Our departments do. Um, it was a tough year for us last year, and so this type of, of ordinance really helps us move forward with problems that we both see, and hopefully we can make it work right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your work on it too. And I think what you just mentioned was significant too. That more than three unrelated people is a significant addition to this from last week. <laughs> since the last time we referred yes. to it, because it does a couple of things I want people to understand. One is that it, <clears throat> it means that if someone is currently in compliance with 
zoning law and may rent a room or two. They're not subject to this. It doesn't overregulate in that regard. But by adding more than three unrelated people to this definition, having it mirror other places in the code, it does also provide teeth to situations that aren't in compliance with that, that various council members have observed are problems in their district and provides some enforcement capabilities along those lines, correct? That is correct. It gives us another tool that we don't currently have in the ordinance. So it's very important to us. We're trying to move forward and, you know, everybody has one somewhere in your area that's a, that's a problem property and, and this kind of coincides with what we did last year with the, uh, the code enforcement side of this. So the two of them together are, we, we keep working ordinances now that interact with each other and make it easier for us to do our job and help us keep our neighborhoods a little uh, better than they are now if we can and, and stop some things that are going on. I think that's a significant point too. And the last thing I just wanted to um, to go through too and sort of clarify is, is the, once this is approved today and goes into effect, the capability to enforce and have the staff enable, being able to do that. There was some discussion last time about uh, the need for inspectors in various areas of your department. I think the response or the clarification was there's four down right now. This may, re this may require the need to fill those spots and it may require an additional four, I think it was four, um, in your budget request for 2016. Can you just expand upon that a little bit? Correct. I have uh, currently four positions that have been unfilled that are in the budget uh, at the current time. And we're going to look to fill those positions too kind of offset this a little bit, but more importantly, the growth of the city. It's kind of a two double-edged sword for me on that one. And then the additional staff that I'm asking for in 2016, which is five inspectors total, okay. uh, is to just bolster our ability to be uh, more efficient and, and kind of fit in line with cities our size for, for the actual enforcement tools. Okay. And you're making that request in the budget process now? Correct. And the four right now that are unfilled, is that just due to vacancies and departures, or how, how would you describe it? it? Well, to be very honest with you, it's due more to the working conditions outside right now. There's so much work going on that people don't want to come to work for the city. I mean, it's we, we try to explain it to them. We try to explain the benefits are a whole lot better than they are out there, but right now the money's talking because there's so much work going on. Hopefully we can fill these positions uh, with qualified candidates, obviously. Uh, we just have to go out and try again. That's all we can do. But, uh, I guess it's a good problem to have that the city's so busy currently that we don't have people to work for us, but it's a long-term problem we need to figure out how to get around somehow. And okay. So you're seeking to fill those 2015 positions right now? Yeah, I would like to start on that as soon as I can to, okay. to get those moving forward, yes. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pauls. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> you just piqued my interest when you said it's hard to get somebody to work for the city now because of the, the salary, except for the benefits. They don't realize what the benefit package is. Correct. So I could work out there in the public and make more money. If I work for the city, so to counterbalance that would be the benefits. Correct. And now I hear everybody wanting to cut benefits. Uh, that's what I've heard, not you, but I hear people say, okay, let's cut some of these benefits. I mean, I'm talking from the, the public. So if you cut the benefits and the salary's not there, that would even that would make your job even harder, would it not? It, it's it's difficult because um, most people who work in the construction industry, and I'm not trying to stereotype because I started out there myself. But uh, when you're young and and full of all kinds of energy, you can work this job for 10 hours a day and, and bring home huge paychecks. You don't think about the time off because you get it when you get it. But as you get older and you realize that your body doesn't like going out there in that cold weather anymore and, and you can't cut like you used to and you can't climb on rafters like you used to, that's when they start to realize that an inside job like ours isn't so bad because we are technically inside a lot. We're, we're not really out in the elements. That's when they also, because we get mature, that's when we realize that, you know benefits are kind of important, whether it's health insurance or whether it's those paid days off that we couldn't take when we were in the field and now we can. So it's a balance to how we explain that. To help them understand but you know if you're out there right now and you're a framing uh, carpenter and you're making 15 20 dollars an hour and you're working 10 12 14 hours a day seven days a week you don't want to talk to me right. you know but eventually the piper will pay itself right okay yeah good thank you mm -hmm. thank you mr Gernan. thank you mr president i would just like to add my thanks to every single individual an entity that participated in getting to where we are today. Hasn't been easy. Uh, 
Jay and I have had some uh, uh, sit-down talks uh, from the night of the event at 22nd and M Street up until just last week. And I, I can tell you that when I looked into Jay Davis's eyes, the seriousness and the, the model in which he works under I think <clears throat> emanates to the committee that was put together to bring where we are today. Uh, some significant praise. You worked hard. Thank you. Chief McGraw, uh, thanks for uh, working so hard to stop something that I've been trying to get rid of in government for years, and that's turf protection. And getting departments to work together uh, is tough, getting them to talk to one another, but getting them technology-wise on that same line is just awesome. And I'm saying all of this because I have to share, I wasn't going to share this story, but i got to share it with you. And I'll, I'll be as quick as I can, Mr. President. But there are skeptics out there that were thinking that the work that was being done behind the scenes was nothing but superficial. Nothing's going to happen. Well, I guarantee you, it's things will happen. Things are going to change because of what is going to take place today. So th to those skeptics, I would say right to your face, you can kiss my research as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. No further lights. Roll call. This is on amendment of the whole D. Pauls. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Durnat. Yes. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Mr. President, yes. Number of whole D is passed seven to zero. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Item number forty-one, ordinance to amend sections 30, 81, 82, 91, 113, 14, 18, 136, uh, to create a new section 30, 98, 99, 100, 101, 137, 38, 39, to create a system whereby the police department can track the pawn and salvage of copper and other metals and goods in order to reduce theft of said items, A is an amendment, B is communications is a four, D is document, and D is an amendment of the whole. Public hearing was held on April 14th. This is amendment of the whole day. So uh, here's the, another item that has an amendment of the whole, uh, similar to the one previously, that I think we should just spend a little bit of time on um, going through uh, to update not only everyone involved, but uh, those that, that I know are following this. So. Um, Consistent with our conversation last week on this and, and our work with um, Sergeant Jenham and Lieutenant Deschler and the, the, the pawn and uh, scrap industry who are also here today, uh, we've come, I think, to a good agreement uh, that everyone supports with this amendment of the whole that I think will do a better job of um, deterring property crime and increasing the likelihood of returning stolen items and deterring things like copper theft that we've all been trying to, to work on as a community. And, What's different than our conversation last week in this memo of the whole is that we had a meeting and found some more common ground between the scrap industry who had some concerns and the police department, and I think we're all on the same page now. So what this will do, this, this different from our conversation last week, is that it does exempt commercial and industrial purchases uh, of items to the scrap industry from a hold period. It takes what was a five-day hold period down to a three-day hold period defined as three days excluding weekends or holidays, uh, which I think works better and achieves the objective we were all trying to get at, but also is more amenable to the scrap industry. And then it talks about only specific items being subject to the hold uh, that are made of precious, precious metals, but they're identifiable, because those are the things we're trying to get at when we try to uh, resolve stolen items or potentially get them returned to their rightful owners. Um, that's what the amendment of the whole does. Uh, we also discussed um, the police department's um, eventual bid of this new electronic tracking system, uh, which is a process that they'll engage in subsequent to this ordinance passing and through the budget process for 2016. 
and agreements when they do that to uh, address or take a hard look at the issue of data security in a system like Leads Online, uh, which is probably their intention to proceed with. And I think there was agreement on that too when they go through that process, which also eventually will come back to us. That's something that will be uh, considered and, and discussed in, in their bidding process. So I'm confident now we have an ordinance that everyone does support. I uh, appreciate everyone who worked with us on it. Um, Mayor Wesley, I don't know if you had any comments you wanted to share being a representative of that industry. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Omaha City Council. My name is Don Wesley, representing ISRI, the uh, uh, Institute of Scrap Recyclers. Um, and I, uh, what a difference a week makes. Uh, we were here very concerned. We just really became aware of the ordinance and, and that, despite the efforts of Councilman uh, Festerson to let us know, which we appreciated. But we did sit down, we had a chance to review, and I want to thank um, President Festerson for his time and his willingness to work with this. Uh, we have a very reasonable ordinance, one that we can live with that makes sense. Uh, we appreciate the Omaha Police Department uh, for their willingness to work with us and, and again, uh, target the problem and not just throw something against the wall and hope it sticks. I mean, we really have something that will work here. And it's a compliment to this council, the, the way uh, you were also willing to listen to us and give us a chance to work on this. The Omaha Mayor's Office, the Omaha uh, Chamber also showed an interest with this. And a city prosecutor, uh, Smallheiser, was able to draft a, a, an ordinance, a, an amendment that we're very supportive of. So thank you very much for your time and, and your interest in working with us, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. I also want to thank David Smallheiser, who's in the room here, too, who helped work on this as the city prosecutor, and I think we'll leave this will be an important tool, too. Thank you. No further lights. Is our motion? Amendment D. Amendment of the whole D. Yep. Amendment of the whole D. <laughs> motion a second. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Yeah. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Mr. President. Yes. Number the whole D is passed 7 to 0. Resolutions. Item number 42. Resolution that the attached 30th and 4th Street redevelopment plan prepared by the Omaha City Planning Department be and hereby is approved as a redevelopment plan for the redevelopment of the area bounded by Stores, Expressway, North Brewery on the south, Ellison Avenue on the north, Florence Boulevard on the east, and 30th Street on the west. Public hearing on number 42 is today. Proponents, please. Jim Anderson, City of Omaha Planning Department. Um, this redevelopment plan is designed to complement a uh, redevelopment effort that I believe you've already approved, the 30th and Fort, or as it will be known, 30th and Metropolitan Place development, um, which is a $16 million effort, which will add 110 uh, apartments, one and two bedrooms, and 11,000 square feet of commercial. Um, this effort on the city's part will be to uh, include infill housing in the area immediately um, east of the area, which if you're familiar with the location, um, the 30th and Metropolitan Place is right on 30th Street across from uh, Metro Community College. Um, it is also, much of it is in kind of the uh, cup of what would be uh, the termination of uh, 75 North, Sorensen Freeway, um, Stores Expressway. Um, so this would be an effort to include uh, infill housing in the area west of um, 27th Street initially, and then also uh, complement that with uh, a focused effort for both homeowner and rental rehabilitation. And then um, at a later point, continue the effort east of um, 27th to uh, complete the redevelopment of the area. The initial phase will cost $2.2 million and will um, include the uh, construction of approximately 10 housing units, single family. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Gray. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. You don't need to stand, but I do want to thank you because it took the it was a it was a very good effort, very concerted effort by the planning department to to uh, uh, do a redevelopment plan for this area. It was a much needed uh, redevelopment plan. Uh, the housing that is going to be there is 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 badly needed. Um, 
my counsel, my colleague to my to my left here, we talked about some 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 places where we have some very difficult issues with housing stock that in some instances looks like third world and uh, certainly over there you have some areas that do and this redevelopment plan and uh, the building of 30 metropolitan places is going to uh, begin I think a renaissance in that area that uh, uh, the city can be proud of in terms of at least getting it started so I want to thank the planning department for its efforts there and uh, make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 42 is adopted, 7 to 0. Item number 43, resolution that attached Callum Heights <coughs> Redevelopment Plan Amendment 3, prepared by the Illinois City Planning Department, being hereby is approved as the redevelopment plan for the redevelopment of the area bounded by Hamilton Street on the north, 24th Street on the east, Cumming Street on the south, and 25th Avenue on the west. Public hearing on number 43 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Chris Wayne with the City of Omaha Planning Department. I um, can answer any questions you might have, but the area, um, as you mentioned, is 24th and, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the northwest corner of 24th and Cumming Street. Uh, it's an area that's basically uh, largely uh, vacant and blighted and substandard uh, vacant lots that are, uh, which there's a lot of dumping and, and, and just neglected, like neglected property. The area does uh, still continue to um, meet the, the state's requirement for uh, blighted and substandard designation. There's been in the past, uh, this is an area that incorporates, that, that's within a larger previous redevelopment plans, four previous redevelopment plans starting in 1977. Um, and, uh, and then and, and coming forward, the last one, the last one was in 1992, so we felt it was necessary to just update that. Um, this isn't an area that includes uh, the proposed CHI hospital, which is a 80 to 90 thousand dollar facility of 22 million dollars. So I can answer any any further questions you might have. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Gray. Again, a big thanks to the planning department for the work that that was done in that particular area. It is going to be a what I think is going to be a really uh, decent. Uh, facility for, with CHI Health and, and um, uh, if we could get uh, one of the uh, landlords in our community to agree, uh, we would uh, we'd be able to have a, a phase two that, that worked really well also and, and hopefully that will come to fruition at some point. Uh, I want to point out too that uh, uh, one of my uh, neighborhood presidents, Neighborhood Action in fact, uh, uh, Ms. Ella Willis is here and uh, a lot of work has been done on the south end of 24th Street, and I can promise you that the north end of 24th Street is going to see some improvement as well in the very near future, especially starting with this meeting this coming Saturday. So um, a good effort. Thanks to the planning department for the work that, that, that you have done to, to make this redevelopment plan work, and uh, it would work better, again, as I said, if we had a, a, a willing landlord. Um, uh, but. The process, the program, the process, I think, is going to be a good one. So thank you for your efforts, and thank you for your continued efforts, and make a motion again to approve. Motion a second. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 43 is adopted, 7 to 0. Thanks. Pursuant City Council Rule 70, the public hearing agenda item 44 shall be held on third reading. Ordinance on second reading, item 45, ordinance authorizing a purchase order to Midwest Laboratories for professional laboratory testing services for the testing of water and wastewater samples. Public hearing on number 45 is today. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? <coughs> Public hearings closed. Item number 46, ordinance to establish a new Class B flammable liquid storage district, B187 at Methodist Hospital, 8303 Dodge Street. Public hearing on number 46 is today. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, the public hearing agenda item 47 shall be held on the third reading. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7C, the public hearing agenda items number 48 through 54 shall be held on the second reading. Second. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Milton, yes. Mr. President, yes. it is 3.07 and we stand adjourned.
Yeah.